again. Hi, friends. Today is September 30th, the feast day of St. Jerome. And today on the Catholic Plebs podcast, I've got um, what I think is a treat, honestly. Um, but yeah, so first off, before even yeah, diving into that, just a little bit about the day. Um, you know, today's been... One rough day. Um, yeah, work has been difficult. Um, been working 12 hours for the past three days, and I have another seven days ahead of me of work. It's been a little rough, but man, you know, God's honestly been good. Um, I had lost some headphones, and he's like, you know what, they're gonna turn up, but in the meantime, I'm gonna buy some headphones. And then, guess what I did today? I lost one of the two headphones that I bought to replace the headphones that I already lost. So, thinking about that on the way home, just very frustrated. And on top of, like, the stress of the day, great way to finish off the day by losing one of my earbuds, and just trying to give everything to God's hands, but, yeah, just honestly frustrated, leaking some, you know, listening to some Leakin Park. Um, and I, uh, yeah... I opened my passenger door to grab something out, and I, I realized I, I found my missing headphones from before. And I also found the missing earbud from earlier on today. So I found both the missing earbud and the missing headphones from before. And, man, I just couldn't help but really feel that like okay you know me losing my headphones i was pretty confident i was gonna find them somewhere because i didn't remember really like leaving them anywhere um and i am pretty pretty methodical about keeping them in a certain location except for this one time so i was like you know what i'm pretty sure there's gonna be showing up somewhere but you know i really just feel like god was allowing me to lose those headphones and just waiting and today was just like such a good day to just like, hey, I know you're stressed, but you still have my love, you know? And that doesn't come in the form of, you know, always getting toys uh, or always getting things, material things, but just like in my language that I have with God, I just, you know, I really felt him say, hey, I am, I'm with you. I'm with you on this. Even though you're stressed out right now, things are tough. Yeah, here's, here's a little treat for me just because I'm extra loving um so yeah that's how my day is going it's it's good i, I need to focus on the good because i can i can even that lose and just allow negativity to overwhelm me and focusing on the bad and not focusing on the gifts that god's given me but today saint jerome the reason i'm recording this podcast is because i think there's something really really beautiful um and the Liturgy of the Hours for the second reading, which is actually uh, for the prologue of the commentary on St. Isaiah from St. Jerome. So I'm just going to get into it right now with you guys. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our help comes in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. A reading from the prologue of the commentaries on Isaiah by St. Jerome. I interpret it as I should, following the command of Christ, search the scriptures, and seek, and you shall find. Christ will not say to me what he said to the Jews. You erred, not knowing the scriptures and not knowing the power of God. For if, as Paul says, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God, and if man who does not know scriptures does not know the power and wisdom of God, then ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. Therefore, I will imitate the head of the household who brings out of those storehouses things both new and old, and say to his spouse in the Song of Songs, I have kept for you things new and old, my beloved. In this way, permit me to explain Isaiah, showing that he was not only a prophet, but an evangelist and an apostle as well. For he says about himself and the other evangelists, How beautiful are the feet of those who preach good news, of those who announce peace. And now, excuse me, and God speaks to him as if he were an apostle, if he were an apostle. 
Whom shall I send? Who will go to my people? And he answers, Here I am, send me. No one should think that I mean to explain the entire subject matter of this great book of Scripture in one brief sermon, since it contains all the mysteries of the Lord. It prophesies that Emmanuel is to be born of a virgin and accomplishes and accomplish marvelous works and signs. It predicts his death, burial, and resurrection from the dead as the Savior of all men. I need say nothing about the natural science, ethics, and logic. Whatever is proper to Holy Scripture, whatever can be expressed in human language and understood by the human mind, is contained in the book of Isaiah. Of these mysteries, the author himself testifies when he writes, You shall be given a vision of all things, like words in a sealed scroll. When they give the writings to a wise man, they will say, Read this, and he will reply, I cannot, for it is sealed. And when the scroll is given to an uneducated man, he is told, Read this. He will reply, I do not know how to read. Should this argument appear weak to anyone, let him listen to the apostle. Let two or three prophets speak, and let others interpret. If, however, a revelation should come to one of those who are seated he there, excuse me, seated there, let the first one be quiet. How can, how can they be silent? Since it depends on the script, uh, excuse me, I'm having a rough time right now. How can they be silent? Since it depends on the spirit who speaks through his prophets, whether they remain silent or speak. If they understood what they were saying, all things would be full of wisdom and knowledge. But it was not the air vibrating with the human voice that reached their ears, but rather it was God speaking within the soul of the prophets. Just as another prophet says, It is an angel who spoke in me, and again cry out in our hearts, Abba, Father, and I shall listen to what the Lord God says within me. So, first off, that's just, as a piece, just wonderful. But the reason I really wanted to share this with you, uh, my friends, is it's, when I think of St. Jerome, I think of an intellectual. Um, and I mean, one of the great intellectuals, right? St. Jerome, doctor of the church. Yet when he speaks towards the end of this uh, this prologue, he acknowledges that the words of wisdom that are wisdom are not truly from like the person they're from the spirit and it's not the vibration it's not the voice it's not like what is innately in the person speaking but what makes the prophet the prophet is that the spirit is moving and the spirit is speaking and why that's so amazing to me is because this is very uh, how shall we say it's very um charismatic you know it's you think um, you think that these two should be like opposing philosophies. Yet, when you look towards towards the beginning, closer towards the beginning, because Saint Jerome was, I think, born in three hundred forty, the year three hundred forty. Um, yeah, but the why I brought this up is because here is a man who is an intellectual, yet he is also very much so open to the spirit, very much so charismatic but also very intellectual and when i hear those things i think of two opposing ideologies of the faith that face off against one another and is trying to compete for dominance um but you, you know what i i really just see that as a trick a trick from the deceiver because what we're saying or what we're seeing is we're seeing a choice between two goods and we're saying you can't have both and like we have to sacrifice one and what that really kind of brought to my mind is like, ah, oh, man, how many times does this happen in our faith? How many times are we asked to sacrifice something that when we really just want both, but we're asked to sacrifice, okay, you have to choose one way or the other, but that's just false. Especially when it comes to the act of like 
being intellectual and being charismatic. You know, St. Jerome was both, very much so both. He recognized the necessity of the spirit, but also was a very intellectual man, very wise man. But how many, how many times in your life have you been told by Satan, you have to choose between these two things, and you, and you, you listened, and you compromised, and you lost something? You know, that's what really spoke out to me today. It's just like, reflect. Reflect on where the devil has told you a lie and where you've had a compromise. See, that um, that was a big thing for me when I was coming back in, in college was I thought if you're going to be successful at work, you can't be, you can't be devout. If you're going to be smart, then you also can't be super athletic. Um, but yeah, it's just like a bunch of like silly compromises and, you know, may, may be really ridiculous to you, but I, I believe them. Um, and it was, you know, only by seeing those compromises and those, those false choices that were offered to me and then like facing those and inviting God into the, the healing of that, that I, yeah, truly began to receive healing. So the thing I'd like to bring to you today is, yeah, where are the, the times in your life, you know, the devil is asking you to compromise on something good between two good choices, but really it's not a choice. You, you can have both. And yeah, reflect on that. Find it out. Invite God to, for the healing. And know that, like, you know, God is God, right? He can raise sons of Abraham from the very stones, as Jesus Christ says, right? So if he can do that, which is, like, literally impossible, um, how much more so can he help you back and grow? And I would just grow in the faith, but honestly grow beyond where you were. If you feel wounded, if you feel like you're falling away from the faith, yeah, God, God is God of the impossible. Yeah, he can do anything. He really can. Um, don't, don't let yourself limit God's wondrous healing. Okay. So I intended to end the podcast there and being fully honest, reflecting on what I've said, there's a very important distinction that I really need to make before signing off and just leaving with this message. And that is there are things in which Christ calls us to discern and he invites us and to trust and that he's going to lead us to the answer. And it is between two goods, but they're exclusive goods, mutually exclusive goods. And I would say they're probably more rare than they are common. And just the easiest one to grasp is, of course, discerning between holy orders and discerning between marriage. And that's not what we're talking about here. Um, what we're talking about is just there are things in your life that God has given you to help you be fully alive. And as, you know, as St. Irenaeus is famous for quoting that uh, man fully alive is God glorified. Uh, and that, of course, is, you know, neither here nor there for just men. It's for obviously men and women too. But yeah, that's what I'm talking about today. The things that it's a gift that God has given you. And you know, you've been asked by the world, demanded by the world, peer pressured by the world, peer pressured by Satan, accused by Satan, that you have to let go and that you have to lose a bit of your identity in Christ that gives you that full life. Yeah, as the Lord says, you know, I've, you know, come to give you life and abundantly. So, brothers and sisters, and friends, just hope you're having a great week. Hope this helps. Hope this is providing something of spiritual, just food that we can both chew on and be nourished by our Heavenly Father in Heaven. So, God bless. Have a wonderful week.